Hi everybody, so these th these are going to be tutorials that I'm going to be putting out based on like questions from people that I either work with or that know my website or found some of my content and actually requested help with something. Uh, so I'm, I decided to make these videos so that everybody has access to the content because I do them anyway for that specific client or person that I'm helping. So the suggestion to start making the videos was from a friend, Xanthias. Yes. She makes videos related to Elementor page builder, if you know what that is. Um, this topic came from her because she wanted a way to sort of explain uh, specific things about what how hosting works to specific people. So I decided to give her the answer in a video because it's a bit more complex than some would think. So I opened up a few hosts that I have as my sort of reference point. It doesn't matter which host I'm talking about, but in general terms, sorry about the pop-ups. In general terms, it's, it's I want to explain what shared hosting is, what, what dedicated hosting is, and what a VPS is, and also what the difference is between managed and unmanaged WordPress hosting. So. <clears throat> let's start with the concept of shared and dedicated hosting. So shared hosting basically means you can have one or more websites on the same server and the resources of the server, meaning the CPU, the RAM and the um, hard drive is being used by more than one person slash website, if that makes sense. And then we have the dedicated servers which all the resources are used by you whether it's for one site or for multiple sites um, because you paid for that dedicated resource and you're the one using it that's it so for example let's go to SiteGround let's just select one of the hosting plans I'm going to explain some things from the SiteGround dashboard but they apply across and I'll show you exactly what I mean so let's say I take the startup plan. It says that I'm allowed to have one WordPress website. My web space is 10 gigabytes. If you want to know how how much space 10 gigabytes is, I'll make another video about that. But for now, let's just assume you know what it means when I say uh, you're, you have space for 10 gigs. And these are the average number of visitors you can monthly handle. That, I think, is sort of a soft average because I, I may or may not have had more visitors than that in a month. So unmetered traffic means that it's not going to decide how much, how many people have come to my website this month and then cut me off if I have reached a specific limit. Now, free SSL means this green little padlock that's on top here. You don't need to pay the, the very expensive ones um, if you are just a brochure website or even a WooCommerce website. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to pay the you know the very expensive one. SiteGround does have daily backups on all its plans and it keeps it for 30 days. Now a content delivery network, I'll make another video on how that works but basically what it does is it copies your site into servers from different countries regardless of your server which you've actually bought um, using Cloudflare for example. So let's say my server is in the UK, it makes copies on servers in Asia, in Europe and in specific countries to be honest and then based on where your visit visitor is coming from it will serve the site from the closest server even if the closest server is not your server which may or may not be in the UK or somewhere else. If yours is the closest then obviously it will serve it from the closest. Now uh, to be clear SiteGround does say that they provide free email which they do as long as you know that email counts towards the 10 gigabytes. So if somebody one of your clients or users has an inbox that is like five gigabytes large, that means that uh, you only have five gigabytes left for a website. Now, as you can see, it does say that uh, WordPress is managed on all of the plans in SiteGround. And to be honest, I think on most hosts, everything is managed. Even if I go to the dedicated, like the dedicated server side for SiteGround, which would probably be cloud hosting, um, these are like it just changes the number of CPUs you can use, the number of the, the memory you could use, the hard drive that you have. Like on the largest plan, I think you go up to 60 maybe gigabytes of SSD storage. 
on these you can go up to like 18 stuff so having this plan would be sort of equivalent to having the middle plan for side ground but obviously you have more resources like CPUs and, and RAM to be able to use. Now um, on this dedicated server again it's managed which means that I'll explain what managed is and what ma unmanaged is so for example if you go to something else like um, DigitalOcean um, you will see that this is unmanaged so what you do is you buy a server you decide what you want and of course depending on how you move this the, the price will increase or whatever um, but then what you get is uh, it asks you which operating system you want of Linux you just say for example I want Ubuntu which is one Linux flavor and then they like you press a button and it installs itself and then you're in Linux but nothing is sort of set up for you security isn't set up backups aren't set up um, nothing's basically set up not even um, web servers or database servers like MySQL PHP nothing set up you have to do that by hand that is unmanaged now for SiteGround which I'm using as my example whether it's dedicated resources which means only you're using it and nobody else or shared resources they are hosted which means the server is set up for you the security is set up um, PHP MySQL uh, how to create emails your SSH access which is the way you use to log into your server from an SSH from um, your PC is all set up for you that's what managed is unmanaged is when you have to do it yourself like with um, services like DigitalOcean which I showed you before it gives you a button to install Linux and then it's up to you to set up security firewalls and all that kind of stuff so that's the difference between managed and unmanaged now um, I wanted to make a note about uh, one thing that people don't actually take a look at when they buy hosting it's all good that you can read this information one thing you don't know about um, shared hosting and this applies to all shared hosts I would say unless they explicitly say something different so for example here for A2 uh, it's got some turbo caching and some stuff it says that it's shared hosting it's got the free SSL it's got a cPanel control panel SiteGround has their own sort of cPanel um, it can install WordPress and all that and it's got staging it says but as you can see it won't actually tell you uh, something very specific that I want to show you so I'm gonna uh, try and log into my account to show you what people don't actually look at uh, I need to do a, a two step verification so give me three seconds to do that because I need to um, actually uh, verify that it is me so give me one second here so two step oh I need to do the verification it already knows that it's me that's fine so let me just do that um, hopefully it goes in for the first time so <clears throat> check on is Let's see if this works put in the right code I'll go in what I want to show you about most host companies which some of them will tell you about it and some of them won't okay other than like the CPU and that kind of stuff so okay one of my services on the maintenance but it's been completed okay so as you can see Saigon take cares of, takes care of a lot of stuff for me so I don't have to worry about it but let's just say that I'm on um, one of my servers doesn't really matter which one I'm just gonna select this site um, I've got multiple sites on multiple servers here which are in one account obviously but I'll just show you something that you need to be aware of on shared hosting generally speaking so I'm gonna click my plan statistics <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you something very important which you should be watching out for when you do buy hosting because it's very important lots of people that use SiteGround sort of um, figure out later in the game so as you can see the, depending on the hosting plan that that website is on I can already tell you that it's on um, a hosting plan that I named Georgia Cloud of Me, which is the first website that I put on there, which is my personal website. And then it shows you sort of how each um, website is 
how much space each website is using. As you can see, one of my websites is using like 10 gigs. And the reason for that is the website isn't that large, but the guy has a 7 gig inbox. So, for example, I don't really remember how big it is. So his um, emails are basically heating up my um, my space. But as you can see, I have 4 gigs left. But the important thing that I wanted to show you guys is something called inodes. Now, inodes are basically the number of files you can store on a file system. Now, for uh, the specific plan that I'm on right now, SiteGround has a limit on inodes, and not only SiteGround does that, most companies do that whether they tell you that or not. Um, if it's not dedicated server space, which is quite expensive, you will have most possibly an inode limit limit which for SiteGround is I think 600,000 inodes and also just so you know inodes is the number of files you have on the server and that includes your website emails and also something which most people again don't know um, let me just go to hopefully one of the websites so I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna select that one again it doesn't really matter what what it is um, so as you can see, this is um, not cPanel, this is SiteGround sort of own sort of um, site tools, they call it. So what I want to show you is that for speed, SiteGround has their sort of own optimization. So they've got uh, some Nginx, which is not Apache, it's another kind of server. And they have something called dynamic caching, which I can't turn off so that takes up space and then there's memcache which you can or cannot turn off and by the way as soon as you turn this on let me just go and show you i'm not going to turn it on right now because it's going to fill up my account but if that makes sense so if as soon as i as soon as i turn any kind of caching on that also adds up to your inode so for example if i go to file manager i can show you um something hopefully if I can see it from up here, you can't see it, and they did that for security reasons. But although you can't see it um, before, when SiteGround didn't have this kind of um, their kind of interface, you could actually see the folder that contained the cache that has been or was being created by um, these sort of directives for caching, and that also takes up inodes. So don't be confused when although your 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 site's like 500 megabytes, it looks like your site um, is taking up like two gigabytes. That's because your host is probably doing caching, and that caching is taking up inodes. Which again, it's inodes because it's the number of files you have on your your server, like in your account. So this is the CDN that I talked about. I don't have it connected, I think, for this website, but if I wanted to, I could, and that would distribute the website. It's just that it's fast enough as is, so I don't really need to do it. But the ideal uh, thing is that you should do it. Uh, Cloudflare is a good thing to sort of add. Um, it doesn't take long if your host has it integrated. If not, um, you need to go through a process. I will, in future tutorials, sort of show you guys how to do either that um, by doing it from an integrated host or by doing it by hand. I'll um, make a tutorial on how you need to do that either way. But what I wanted to say is that most companies don't tell you about the inode limitation. The only way you don't have inode limitations is when the server is dedicated, and that is about it for this tutorial I will make sure to show you guys um, more basic stuff but because this question came in I wanted to demystify what managed hosting is what shared hosting is and what unmanaged hosting is and what dedicated hosting is so shared hosting is when you can have more than one website on a server and I'm not talking about only yours so on my shared hosting there might be other sites that also use the same server that aren't mine um, that's shared hosting then you have dedicated hosting where it's only your sites and all the resources including CPU RAM uh, everything basically 
uh, is yours to use. And then the difference between managed and unmanaged hosting is that on managed hosting, which is uh, even on most shared hosting, it's always managed, means that the server is set up for you in specific ways. Sometimes you can change things and sometimes you can't because the, the, the company doesn't allow you to change specific parameters of the server. And then when it's unmanaged, it's something like DigitalOcean where it just tells you what servers, what hardware do you want, like how much RAM, how much disk space, and how much um, how much CPU you need. And then you just select that, you pay for it, and then it tells you, okay, what operating system do you want? You say Linux, a flavor, for example, Ubuntu, and then you just have that installed security, backups, anti-hacking, sort of software you need to install, firewall monitoring, and all that stuff you need to do by yourself when it's unmanaged. So I just thought I should demystify that for you guys.